At this point now, before lunch, we want to give you a couple of reports on um, um, some of our ongoing studies. Um, and the first one um, is by Greg Wong, who was the uh, principal investigator of our third molar study, and he wants to specifically talk about um, follow-up um, for that, uh, that particular study. So, Greg. Thank you. Yeah. How's my sound? Is it good? Okay. Thanks. Two years ago, I spoke at this annual meeting, and we were just about to launch the third molar study, study nine. And here we are two years later. 800-some patients have been enrolled. So we, we've really come a long ways. And I'd like to thank all of you dentists, staff out there that have contributed patients, because truly, without you contributing these patients, we would not be able to conduct this study. And as we move from Jan, who gave this very nice overview, we now move to one study, which I'll talk about a little bit. And then we'll even focus very narrowly on specifically the follow-up. And I think you guys kind of get a sense of how important it is that we do collect very complete data, very accurate data, and that this data, in fact, will be shared worldwide, not just in our own lo local network. Of course, every day when I practice, I encounter teenage patients, and I see this situation. I'm sure all of you do, too, right? Of course, there's some missing teeth here. But what do we do with this guy, and this guy, and this guy? And that's really the purpose of our study, is to try to get some better information on third molars. So it is a practice-based study um, in the offices of all your general practices, two-year assessment period. And this is longer than almost all other third molar studies that investigate complications. And we have a unique opportunity in this patient population to actually also look at patients who do not have their third molars removed to find out what happens to them over a two-year period. Here's our specific aims. Number one is the reasons for removal or retention. I'll call that phase one. Phase two is adherence to recommendations by patients. We're currently in that phase now, querying the patients every eight months for a two-year period. The third aim was to look at some complications, specifically paresthesia and TMD, over this two-year period. And the fourth aim was to look at caries rates and periodontal status, specifically of the um, second molars during this two-year phase, uh, whether patients did or did not get their third molars removed. The phase one design was cross-sectional, as you know. We enrolled 16 to 20-year-old patients who had at least one third molar but had never had prior third molar removal. And patients were approached typically during their typical recall visits. Um, we had about 50 patients, or, I'm sorry, 50 dentists who participated in this study, over 800 enrolled patients. And there's two posters in the poster area on study nine results from this phase one. Um, the data collection is complete, and we are in the process of uh, writing a manuscript. So, uh, one fellow approached me earlier and was interested, and if any others of you are interested in participating in the manuscript, please let me know. We're, we're happy always to have help. Phase two has been this uh, two-year web-based longitudinal study, and we have been contacting patients via email, asking them to go online, complete a survey, and uh, their incentive is uh, iTunes and also a raffle for iPods. So it has allowed us to, to look at um, the adherence to the recommendations that we give them, the reasons for patients' actions, and also their self-reported complications over the two-year period. This was intended to take minimal office time, although uh, we have recruited the dentist's office to help us contact the patients to get them to assist with, um, with the uh, online surveys. Um, as Brian mentioned earlier, unfortunately, the response rate has not been as high as we had liked. It's, it's hovering around 50% right now. And uh, we do appreciate the help that your offices have been giving us in contacting these patients. Um, the Data Coordinating Center tells me that it definitely has helped quite a bit to have you contact these patients, remind them to go online and fill out the surveys. 
So this phase two is ongoing. Phase three is really what we're about to launch now. We're just coming up on the first patients now who have been enrolled for two years. And uh, we want a recall to assess caries, perio, paresthesia, and TMD. And it's a, it's a very similar to examination to what was conducted at the very beginning of this study in phase one. And uh, it is, again, intended to coincide with a routine recall visit for these patients. So we felt that it was important to talk specifically about this phase because, again, it is so important that we try to collect as complete a data as we can possibly get. So training will be done by the regional coordinators. I don't think there will really be a lot of training, but I think it's always good for the regional coordinators to talk to your staff, make sure everybody is on the same page about the procedures to go through as we do this final phase of data collection. Um, each dentist will be contacted by the regional coordinator periodically, and the coordinator will be giving you lists of patients who will become eligible soon for this two-year follow-up exam. Our, um, our target, I think, is about 320 of these follow-up exams. So somewhere between uh, a third and a half of the patients that we've enrolled, we want to recall. And what we'd like you to do is to try to schedule these patients for the final exam, um, coinciding again with the typical recall visit. Now, our, our ideal date for recall is two years after they are, were enrolled. So you will be getting information about patients uh, six months in advance, some, some a little less, but we, we're going to try to give you information six months in advance of that two-year mark. And therefore, you'll have plenty of time to schedule these patients to come in uh, with the usual recall visit. Now, our window is going to be anywhere from 18 to 30 months. So it's 24 months plus or minus six months. We realize this is a very mobile population and you know, some people go away for college. Sometimes the only opportunity to get these people back is summertime or maybe during the uh, end of the year holidays. And if one of those times is within this 18 to 30 month period, then you know, I think it's a good idea to collect the data at that time. Okay. So we, our goal is to recall really everybody that is eligible because of the length of time it took to enroll patients we're thinking that um, we'll probably have three to 400 patients who actually will be enrolled in the study for that two-year period, okay? So in a sense, everybody that becomes eligible, we would like to recall them. There's no upper limit for the number of patients that your office can recall at this time. The phase three procedures, there'll be a clinical exam similar to phase one. You'll look at TMJ, paresthesia, periodontal status, and caries. And I, I want to mention x-rays for a second because um, obviously this, this study was designed to be an observational study. We were not taking x-rays specifically for the purpose of this study. Um, we would like to have x-rays to assess interproximal caries at the two-year point. Okay? These x-rays could be taken any time in the preceding six months that would be okay, or if you feel it's indicated at the time of the visit, this 24-month recall, to take new bite wings or periapicals, that would be fine too. You can use those to assess interproximal caries. Um, so either one of those would be okay. However, we, we realize x-rays are sometimes a sticky issue and we do not want to miss out on any patients because they don't have those x-rays. The only thing we're assessing with those x-rays is interproximal caries of the second and third molars. So if you don't have x-rays taken within six months and you don't feel that it's indicated to take x-rays at that visit, it's okay. We can still gather all the other data about the patient. We will still use that patient as one of the follow-up patients. We just won't have that one specific piece of data. Okay. So you can just skip that question on interproximal caries. And as I mentioned earlier, we, we had hoped to get a response rate of maybe 70 to 80% for these uh, patient surveys. It just is not happening. 
Uh, I think 50%, if we can get above 50, maybe that's the best we can do with this kind of a population. Um, you know, if we were to design this all over again, there's been a lot of talk about we should have been Facebooking and we should have been twitting or tweeting or whatever <laughs> the appropriate phrase is. But the reality is a lot of these um, patients, I think, just disregard their email. All of us are bombarded with junk email. So as, as a response to this low rate, what we've decided to do is to actually have uh, all these patients who return for a recall, uh, we would like you to provide them with a hard copy of the final 24-month patient questionnaire. Ask them to fill these out in your offices, and, um, and then there will be an envelope to place them in, and your office will collect them and then periodically send them to Axio. Okay. Now, for those who don't come in for this recall visit, we will still be trying actively to get them to fill out the online um, questionnaire. For this 24-month time period, we really would like to try to get up to a 70 or 80 percent response rate, and we're hoping we can get about 50 percent just from the folks coming in for these um, final clinical exams. Okay. So to summarize, I know I, I threw up a lot of slides and I didn't show any videos, I'm sorry. I, I should always show a, a good video, but uh, to summarize, training will be scheduled soon. Um, your offices will be informed which patients to recall. We want to make this as easy as we can for your office staff. So we'll tell you who's going to be coming eligible. We'll give you plenty of lead time, six months, I hope, to let you look at your schedules and to figure out when will be the best time to bring the, these patients in. And uh, x-rays are preferred, but not absolutely necessary. Okay. And the last item would be that um, the hard copy of the 24-month survey we would like you to, to give to the patients to, um, to respond to at the time that they come for this follow-up visit. I thank you for your attention. I again want to thank all of you for participating in this study. I know it's been a long study. Uh, it's been a lot of work. And I would just urge all of you to, to kind of, you know, have this final push to complete this study so that we can collect the uh, absolutely best data possible. Okay, thank you. Okay.